In high definition, this is News Channel 5, where the news comes first. We begin tonight with a News Channel 5 exclusive embattled Missouri Congressman Todd Aiken back in St. Louis tonight. Aiken arrived at Lambert St. Louis International Airport around 8.30. He was returning after several days in Ohio where he filmed a new television ad apologizing for his comments regarding rape and abortion that set off a political firestorm. Aiken has resisted calls from his own party to exit the U.S. Senate race, and I was hoping to talk to him about that tonight. Can I just ask you about your decision to stay in the race? No, not right now. We'll catch you a little bit later. Thanks. The Congressman, do you think... Were you upset with what, how the Republican Party did not back you during all this? Does it bother you that they kind of bailed on you? Well, it's been exciting days. We do the best we can. And do you still think you can win the race? I believe so. One Republican strategist told me tonight if the congressman is going to stay in the race, he will have to say more to the local media soon because we broadcast to his constituents. Congressman Aiken was in Ohio at his media consultant's office as the 5 p.m. deadline for him to withdraw from the race came and went. He can still withdraw from the race before September 25th, but not without a court order. That new Aiken television ad is running in Missouri, and in it he apologizes for his comment, women's bodies can prevent pregnancies in cases of, quote, legitimate rape. Right now it's unclear how much he'll lose in donations, but we do know he's spending at least some money on airing this apology ad. Rape is an evil act. I used the wrong words in the wrong way, and for that I apologize. As the father of two daughters, I want tough justice for predators. I have a compassionate heart for the victims of sexual assault, and I pray for them. In the ad, Aiken also said that rape can lead to pregnancies. Missouri's former U.S. Senators, along with current Senator Roy Blunt, put out a joint statement asking Aiken to step aside earlier today. Along with Senator Blunt, former Senators John Ashcroft, Kit Vaughn, Jim Talent, and John Danforth called Aiken's comments on rape and pregnancy totally unacceptable. News Channel 5's Art Holiday has more on Senator Danforth's strong comments about Todd Aiken. Art? Well, Mike, former Senator Danforth says Aiken's comments on abortion and rape are a distraction and has made it impossible for the GOP to win Missouri's Senate seat. High definition, this is News Channel 5, where the news comes first. Happening right now in St. Louis, we are following two big stories. I'm Mike Bush live at Clayton High School where tonight a lot is on the line when Senator Claire McCaskill debates her challenger Congressman Todd Aiken on the stage behind me with just weeks to go in Missouri's U.S. Senate race. And I'm Kay Quinn. It's game four of the National League Championship Series for the Cardinals. If they can win, they'll be just one game away from the World Series. And we are bringing it to you live. Our Mike Bush is live at Clayton High School to show us just what to expect, Mike. Well, Kay, across the state and across the country, this race has been a hot topic. Democrat Claire McCaskill and her Republican challenger Todd Aiken will debate tonight here at Clayton High School Auditorium. Now, both candidates have been preparing for the past few days. McCaskill and Aiken both have described their race as one of stark contrast. Senator McCaskill has been working to emphasize those differences in her ads and public appearances. She has claimed that Aiken's ideas, such as reducing domestic programs like the Department of Education, are just too extreme. Um, not only would he do away with the Department of Education, he wants the federal government to end all involvement in student loans and school lunches. Uh, no more Pell Grants, no more federally backed student loans. Congressman Aiken says he is a conservative who is against taxes and who wants to rein in federal government that he says has gotten too big. Claire McCaskill and Barack Obama's record is one of a deep faith in big government doing everything. And my record is one of wanting more common sense from Missouri and more freedom. Uh, I think that's a stretch. Now, one topic that may likely come up during the debate are the comments Aiken made about rape and pregnancy. He has since apologized several times for what he said, but it has continued to be a topic for campaign commercials. Now, a libertarian candidate is also in the U.S. Senate race, but Jonathan Dine will not be a part of tonight's debate. Organizers of this debate made the decision based on polling, but News Channel 5's Art Holiday joins us now with a look at Dine's campaign. Art? 
Well, Mike, Jonathan Dine's positions lie somewhere between that of Democrats and Republicans. However, Missouri law doesn't allow felons to hold office. So in other words, he can't run for school board, but he can become a U.S. Senator. You're correct. And for some reason, the word baggage comes to mind when discussing his criminal history. Yes. All right. Thanks, Art. Well, just to give you a sense of the format for tonight, I will be moderating, but we have five panelists asking questions. One from KWMU, the St. Louis Business Journal, the Clayton Chamber of Commerce, Clayton High School, and Art Holiday from News Channel 5. We will also be using questions from our audience here in the theater. Each candidate will get a three-minute opening statement and a three-minute closing statement, and the debate will be carried on television stations across Missouri in Kansas City, Columbia, and Springfield. So we invite you to join the conversation on Twitter as well. That hashtag is M-O-S-E-N, Mo Sen. And Kay, we know a lot of people will be watching the Cardinals game tonight, and so we invite you to set your DVRs, that Kay. Is, that is a great idea. All right, thank you, Mike. Path of destruction. At least nine people were killed, hundreds of others injured, as tornadoes swept across the Midwest overnight. From Kansas to Kentucky, crews spent today searching for survivors. The worst hit Southern Illinois. I am Mike Bush in Harrisburg, Illinois, about 130 miles southeast of St. Louis. And we are in an area, the Walmart parking lot in Harrisburg, which was hit hard by this EF4 tornado that killed six people. Now the Walmart, you can't see it, is behind the camera. It was heavily damaged, but nothing like this strip mall behind me where a cash store, a sporting goods store, and a game store were all completely destroyed. Now here's a look at the death toll across Missouri and Illinois. Going west to east, there is also one dead in Cassville, Buffalo, and Puxico, then across the Mississippi. Again, six here in Harrisburg, Illinois. That's four women and two men. We have live team coverage tonight of the tornadoes that hit during what's supposed to be winter. There's supposed to be snow on the ground and not funnels in the sky. Let's begin with Casey Nolan. Casey? That's right, Mike. Those trying to survive this storm had a couple of things working against them, both nothing more than a pillow to protect them. And we've been saying this storm had very bad timing coming in overnight while people were asleep. On the other hand, if you look behind us, if these people had been in business Absolutely. and in these buildings when this tornado hit, it could have been very devastating. Exactly. The timing kept some people safe as well. Right. All right, Casey, thanks very much. Now, there was a curfew tonight in those devastated areas from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. They're trying to keep out gawkers and sightseers and especially looters, but it was not effective for everybody. News Channel 5's Courtney Guzman reports. Melissa Dowdy is, will be prosecuted to the fullest extent. And one of the first places the police went to was right here because behind us is a cash store mm. that was completely destroyed. All right, okay. thanks very much, Courtney. Well, it's been a terrible day, obviously, for the residents here in Harrisburg, and no one has been busier than the mayor of Harrisburg. And Eric Gregg told me earlier today what he witnessed as the storm came in. You know, unfortunately, this morning when I heard the sirens going off and I came outside to uh, to see what was going on. And but it did tear apart homes and businesses. Here's an aerial view of the city's entertainment strip where hotels and theaters are damaged. The majority of the storm damage centered around the historic downtown area and Branson Landing. The Branson Airport was unaffected by the storms and flights are departing and arriving with no delays. Major attractions such as Silver Dollar City, Sight and Sound Theater, they were not damaged and they remain open. So let's continue our team coverage tonight and go to Branson, Missouri and check in with News Channel 5's Mike Rush. Mike. Mike, there is a curfew. With the Olympics just two days away, tens of thousands of people are heading to London. There's a Trenton, Missouri woman heading there too, but against her will. As you're about to learn, she will be leaving behind her entire family and she has no idea when she'll be able to come back. The small town of Trenton, Missouri is 250 miles from St. Louis. It's places like this out in the country that are the backbone of our country. That this is a nice place to live and a really good community. What can I get you guys to drink? But at Trenton's Lakeview Motor Lodge and Restaurant, these are difficult days for Allie Gray and her family, who've owned the place since 1995. I think the whole, everybody that knows them, 
They're just heartbroken about it. The Greys are British citizens, and though they've been here legally for the better part of two decades, their daughter Lauren is scared. She's just days away from deporting herself back to England. Scared is an understatement. I have so many emotions running through my head at any time during the day. Lauren has lived in the United States since she was four. She went to grade school here and high school, and she recently graduated from Stevens College in Columbia with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in dance. Can't believe it's over. But unless there is some kind of last minute reprieve, she will have to continue her training in Britain. On August 8th, she turns 21 and will be bumped off her parents' visa, meaning she would be here illegally. All doors are shutting over here, thousands of doors. Where's the fire? What's the hurry about? Lauren desperately wants to become a citizen, and her grandparents started applying for her green card when they became naturalized citizens back in 2003 but the wait continues. We realized that time was getting short, but we hoped and prayed that it would happen before 2012. Everybody thinks it's wrong. Customers at the restaurant and hotel have been signing a petition to try and get the attention of lawmakers. <sighs> they don't want her to leave. She's, you know, she's growing up here. It's horrible, dreadfully guilty. I hate to think I'm putting her through this. Back in June, the Department of Homeland Security stopped deporting law-abiding immigrants who were brought to this country illegally by their parents or others. This was for the children who knew no other country but the U.S. But that didn't help Lauren because Lauren is here legally. You could say she fell through the gaps. I think a better way of saying is our immigration system is broken. Ken Schmidt is an immigration attorney here in St. Louis. And while he isn't connected with the Gray case, he says he deals with heartbreaking stories like this every day. If I were her lawyer, I'd tell you you have to leave at this point, if you have to maintain your status. Do our clients always do that? No. I was at a studio in Trenton first, and then I came here. And though she knows the immigration service way. won't be knocking on her door um, to throw so her out. Studio 98 is called All You Need Is A Song. Lauren says staying here illegally Eat is not an option. Because I, we've done things right for 17 years, and I don't want to jeopardize getting my green card in a year. So next week, Lauren Gray will pack her bags for London to go live with an aunt, leaving behind a younger sister and her mom and dad. Yeah, we're very close, and it's just going to be really hard. When will you realize being away? It could take a year or more, but Lauren says she will wait until her name finally comes up so she can return to the only home she has really ever known. This isn't just breaking my heart and my family's heart, it's breaking a lot of people's hearts. Just to be clear, Lauren's parents are here on E-2 visas, which allow them to have their own business and can be extended indefinitely. Her grandparents are naturalized citizens, and as soon as they got their citizenship, they started applying for green cards for the rest of the family. But there's a huge backlog, and it takes more than 10 years. I contacted the Immigration Service, but they tell me they can't comment on specific cases. And I requested some information from Senator McCaskill's office, but I'm told her schedule has been too hectic. If you'd like to sign Lauren's petition, we can link you to the website when you go to the story on KSDK.com. As our athletes get ready to come home from the Olympics, some of our service men and women are about to ship out to Afghanistan. When they deploy, it's not easy to stay connected to their families. But as we learn in tonight's Making a Difference report, there's an organization trying to change that. Right there, one, two, three. A one, two, photograph three. captures just a moment in time, but it can have a lasting effect. You feel a lot more pressure because you know how important the images are. No! Today's session is with the Bolin family. Relax, relax those shoulders. Whose Stand time up. together is about yeah. to run out Stand up straight. for a while. All right, perfect. It's my third Afghanistan deployment. Master Sergeant Sean Anthony Bolin leaves in just a few weeks for nine more months in Afghanistan. Dial it up. Let me see all the attitude you got. One, two, three. He's here yeah, with his family now. today One. thanks to HeartsApart.org, a nonprofit created to keep families connected 
while our military men and women are serving overseas. I uh, looked on their website and learned about them and was so excited when they decided to pick us for a session. Just like that. Every image is professionally shot by volunteers. Down right here. And then the photos are given to the families for free. As a small way to give back to our military families, uh, I can donate an afternoon and photograph them and their families. For Army veterans like Sergeant Bolin, commitment to country and commitment to family can be a difficult balance. It's kind of hard because, like, he's always gone. <laughs> and deployment brings so much uncertainty. Not knowing if he's okay. Coming around right there. One, two, three. So the hope is these photos displayed in the family's home on a table or wall will bring some comfort. One, two, three. As for the service men and women, one, two, three. Copies are printed on again, durable waterproof cards one, two, three. so they can keep pictures of their spouses and children in their uniform pockets. He'll be able to just reach in and look at it anytime he wants. Serving our armed forces while they continue to serve us. I want him to look at that photo of his wife and I want him to know that that's who he's going home to. Heartsapart.org, making sure that out of the country never means out of the picture. The Bolins are from New Haven, Missouri, about an hour and 20 minutes west of St. Louis, and the photographer is Doug Howell.